Uh, as you can see, the, the leash aspect is really playing in. You know, you have to have both your characters sit on a switch uh, to speed up your charge instead of pressing down and whatever uh -huh. button over and over again. <laughs> you have to use your other character to charge you. Like you'll see right now, somebody has to stand on the knuckle space to open this door, and someone has to stand on, on the chameleon space, the espio space. And you'll feel like the the uh, friction between the two characters, as you can see. So you can't go too far. Yeah, it does feel like I'm being pulled. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, an interesting game. Now, you see... Some better graphics. There, yeah, we're know. getting to check out the power of the 32X here. They're kind of overdoing this whole thing. <laughs> it do it's doing a lot of things that the Genesis definitely couldn't do as far as uh, scaling the images and the layering of the backgrounds and foregrounds. Uh, if you can hear the music, it's got a really upbeat, uh, almost CD quality audio track, which sounds pretty good. So, um, this is really cool. This is, uh, as Duck said, the, basically the Sonic 4 that never was. Yeah. So, uh... And these characters became part of the Sonic lore. They, they, they did. They were in other games. They've, they're in other games. Such as Sonic Heroes, and uh, I believe, uh... Two of the characters made an appearance in the arcade fighters game. And uh, so they're just in the lore, and of course it's uh, Knuckles as the main character. So... I always felt that Knuckles was hipper than Sonic. Did anyone else feel that way? That's what he, he was. the anti-hero. Uh, yeah, and Sonic was almost that way to begin with. So he was like, whoa, this <laughs> dude is rad. <laughs> so of course when they did the 32X, they did do the right thing there and... Uh, and give Knuckles his own series and try and promote this character, uh, whatever, Albatross. the, the Echidna, <laughs> and they picked, they picked the most obscure animals for is their, is it Echidna? I always said Echidna, is it Echidna? I'm, I don't even know what that real animal is, so <laughs> I'm not sure, but you know, they, they picked really obscure animals for is this, it, so I'll give them anything? points for that. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody check that for us. Somebody, Somebody send us one in the mail. Now, um... <laughs> send us the kid in the mail. .com. There you go. Right, there you go. <laughs> I like the way the graphics look. It's definitely taking advantage of the 32X's abilities. Yeah. There's so many colors on screen. Yeah, and that's impressive. The 32X was capable of 32,000 simultaneous colors, which is uh, way more than the 16-bit consoles could do. They could do... Well, the Super NES could do 256 on screen. I'm not sure what the Genesis was, so that's a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, this, the system is definitely an upgrade from the 16-bit systems, but it was not the system... It wasn't a next-gen system is what they were trying to sell. And you know what, I noticed... That was the thing. I'm noticing it, the problem... It could have been, but every, everything else was better and it didn't do anything that well. You know, it, it just was not the right product. Now, the one thing I don't like about this game is it does not have the speed of a Sonic game. Yeah. You're, you're being slowed down a lot because you seem to be going through levels or advancing upwards through a stage. I'm not sure if the oh, rest of the game's like that, but, you know, the appeal of Sonic in the beginning was the speed. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, ledges where you have to stop, and a lot of that probably has to do with the mechanic of the chain or the like, leash mm -hmm. and trying to keep the character Albatross. with you. Come now, uh, what I'm curious if is if maybe uh, Sega looked at that in the game design and lore of the character and were like, well, you know, this really doesn't fit the design of the Sonic mold. Why don't we alter it? Yeah, And so, true. you know, it really fits Knuckles climbing the walls yeah. there. That was slick. Yeah, a lot of the, and a lot of the characters fly in this game, and that might be another thing. Maybe there's a lot of levels that go uh, vertical instead of horizontal. Yeah. I'm noticing, I'm noticing it just keeps going up and up and up. Yeah, so... Uh, Fades. I'm not sure what the next level is. <laughs> it seems like this one level just keeps going on forever. So now, th this is really cool. Now, was this developed by the American team as well? Does it, uh, do you guys know? I believe, if I so. believe Actually, so. A lot of the I read that a lot of the Sonic games were developed by American teams. Um, yeah. It's just under the supervision of the Japanese. Yeah. That this game, I'm sure, was it seems it, it seems a lot different. I know it plays a lot different than a regular Sonic title. 
Even though it looks like one, even while you're playing it, though, it's a lot different. I'm We're just, bouncing. I'm We're just uh, guessing since pretty much everything else on the 32x from Sega was from the American teams that you know this one was too. Now this game is a lot longer than the average Sonic game, so there is a battery backup. You have save points in the game that you can get to. But it does have the bonus levels, and it has your enemies at the end of the level instead of animals coming out. No, look at that. That's pretty cool. You see some scaling there. Yeah. Yeah, they did some really, a really that, jump in that. Oh yeah, baby. They did a really good job with the how it all looks. Whoa! Oh, here we, there go. we go. How's this controlling, Ray? Is that kind of jerky? No, it controls fine. It's just kind of weird how the camera goes. Yeah. Kinda cool. And once Four again, this is slow paced too, even compared to you know the bonus level in Sonic 2. Yeah, that, it, it really the, is. The bonus levels in the you Sonic know why? Ones. It doesn't have blast processing. Uh -oh. What is blast processing, Ron? Blast processing is a generic buzzword that Sega made up to describe the processing power of the Sega Genesis. Really? Oh, Some you can choose different players. Get the bee now. and the crocodile, man. I want to see them. So. uh... Yeah, uh, blast processing really doesn't mean anything. He's like <laughs> tiny. Wow, this is kind of neat. I'm being amazed by things right now. I like that. Anytime you have a bee involved... I think so. You, I mean, you pay attention. Americans love bees. <laughs> I think anyone likes bees. Oh, is this a mini? Except when they sting you. <laughs> this is where you choose your partner. Oh. Apparently I get the armadillo. Well, they kind of made a mini game out of so it. So this is the character that was the original design. No, of... this is the chameleon. We oh, okay. The armadillo was the one with kind of like the horns coming out of him. That was the original design for Sonic. I mean, they went through a couple different characters. And I also read something I thought was interesting. Sega for the first Sonic the Hedgehog game, instead of having that Sega at the beginning of the game, they were going to have a four-member band that you could play with, and the crocodile was actually going to be part of it. He's going to play the synth <laughs> keyboard. But they had to abandon that concept because they couldn't get it right and it took up too much memory. Now, uh, one thing here I'll throw out about the Sega Genesis, since that kind of reminds the me speed. of it, is uh, the Sega Genesis had a lockout code, which uh, no console before that had, I don't believe. Um, and I think the NES had that, didn't it? Um, well, the, it was different. Like, w the way it worked was that they had to program into the game that beginning, what the Sega. What the hell is this? <laughs> when that Sega thing appears at the beginning of the game, uh, that has to be programmed into the game code, or else the game will not load. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So you have to put from Sega in order for it to appear. Huh. And so that's how they tried to stop unlicensed games. And eventually companies found workarounds for that, but it ended up frying systems and stuff, so it it was probably Tengen. I can't recall it, offhand, it, but I'm thinking it, it might I'm thinking it might have been Tengen! the uh, the nefarious Tengen who uh, would not Apparently you need to be tripping right. to play this game. <laughs> this is pretty out there. Wow. Oh my god. You're like a bee. <laughs> This is crazy. You can reach out and touch him. <laughs> I can't see him. <laughs> he's being covered up by those numbers. Evidently, he's doing something that needs to be censored. <laughs> now, uh, no, now he's playing the beat. Do some of the flying moves. I saw you doing them already. What, like that? Yeah, that would help you a lot with these vertical levels. Now, here's know? something cool, too, is uh, with all the... You're just skipping everything. With the variety <laughs> of characters, you can uh, go through these levels differently... Uh, and the characters actually animate differently, you know, with the, with the B, that? he's gonna move around differently than the other characters. So, this is, overall, a really, uh, well put together game. It's a Unique cool project. I, I like the idea here. It's Unfortunately, it came to the wrong system. Exactly. Yeah, I, I guarantee you, uh, well, not guarantee you, this. most people miss this game with only 200,000 32Xs sold worldwide. Not many people saw this thing. Two Gen Gamers, Young